This video is brought to you by Helix Sleep. Remember Quibi? You know, that one streaming app from 2020 that specifically focused on short form content that you had to pay for to watch. Th the company that cost nearly $2 billion to launch, but was scrapped less than a year later for around 1 20th of the original cost. The, the app that had a show that was obviously trying to look like Bojack Horseman, but was one of the most awkward things ever made. Help! I'm caught in quicksand! Get me out! Get me out! Don't worry! Leo, I'll save you! Although if I was ever gonna let Leo slip away, now is definitely the time. No, 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 that's evil. I'm on my way! Oh, crab balls. Yeah, that one! Today, folks, we're talking about Your Daily Horoscope, an animated series that was hosted on Quibi, had over 1,200 episodes, yet the entire show is now virtually lost media. It is insane to me that in the year of our Lord, 2020, two years ago, so I guess it's not really the year of our Lord, that two years ago, a show came out with 1,200 episodes of an online series, and then it just, poof, disappeared out of existence. People can somehow find an obscure movie with a Christmas elf guy from 1990, yet nobody gave a damn when it came to archiving your daily horoscope. I guess it was just that bad. Libra, you really know about avocado toast. Well, yeah, duh. That's important. Hey, does anyone happen to know how a bill gets passed in the Senate? I have no idea. So I decided to look more into this topic to see if I can unravel the mystery that surrounds it. Whatever happened to this show? Was it just some uninspired ripoff of Bojack Horseman? Or perhaps, maybe, something more? Is this show just garbage? Or maybe there's a silver lining to it? Is this show actually gone for good? With no trace left behind? Well, during my hours of research for this topic, I actually stumbled across three episodes of the show. As far as I can tell, they are the only three full episodes of the series in existence. Well, at least that are available to watch for the public. So, let's take a closer look and see what the hell is your daily horoscope. Wow, wonder how that'll play out. <laughs> like I already said, your daily horoscope was exclusively on Quibi, a disastrous streaming service that tried to be TikTok but behind a paywall. It was spearheaded by Meg Whitman and Jeffrey Katzenberg. <laughs> The objective of the platform was to take aim at short-form content that was primarily consumed via mobile devices. Millions of people use their smartphones for YouTube and TikTok, so in theory, this should work for Quibi too, right? <laughs> well, it turns out that most people don't want to pay $8 a month to watch the video equivalent of fast food. And it only took six months for Quibi to shut down, burning hundreds of millions of dollars in the process, and the majority of its original programming going down with the ship. Like that uh, one show about the girl with the golden arm. You've got to take off that prosthetic. No, I can't take off my golden arm, ever. Seriously, the shows from Quibi remind me of the fake shows from 30 Rock. If you're tired of sexy vampires, then you'll love Punchbacks, starring Jonathan Silverman as Dr. Fantastico. And do you like the information channel you get when you stay in a hotel? Well, Thursdays is just that now. Quibi, to me, is an excellent case study of how companies can have the money, have the connections, have the celebrity names. But if the idea, if the concept, of what they're trying to do is flawed, then it is going to fail no matter how much money you throw at it. Your Daily Horoscope is a byproduct of said effort. The showrunner was Kelly Landry, but the main name attached to the show is producer Will Arnett. Uh, by the way, there's a stupid amount of producers on this show. I was thinking for a second, like, are there more producers than there are animators? And guys, kind of close. Now, Will Arnett here is the voice of the titular character Bojack from Netflix's Bojack Horseman. And I have to ask myself, was his heart truly invested in your daily horoscope? I'm a Gemini. Okay, oh, so you're a Gemini. Yeah, what do you know about me? I need all the tea. I think Geminis, right, don't they get that, um, they get that kind of thing of being like dual, having kind of dual personality a little bit? Is that what you... Yeah. Uh, no. Folks, he did not give a crap about this show. 
He was just getting that bag. And can you blame him? Gotta get those quibby bucks. Uh, real talk, this is one of the most awkward interviews I've ever seen. I don't think he even knows what astrology is. You're a Taurus. Yes. Uh, what would you say your sign is known for? <laughs> There's also an interview from ET with folks who like worked on Daily Horoscope, including a person who is a professional astrologer. Ooh la la! Um, and they brought her on for the series for like a creative consultation. <laughs> this is great. I love this. I know. Sweating. <laughs> now I was able to find a bunch of social media posts in regards to your Daily Horoscope that tried to hype up the show. How it was, according to them, quote. The first show where you are the character. <laughs> Whatever that means. Clearly, they were trying to dip into that astrology nerd demographic. I guess it's lucrative. I, I don't know. I, I know very little about astrology. But you know, teach their own. Now, the show itself was a daily series that followed the mishaps of 12 millennial Zodiac characters who all worked at the same company. I guess Scorpio. You got Scorpio. Scorp Scorpy? Scorpio? Scorp the Scorpion. You got Gemini. You got E621. And then you have the totally not background character from Bojack Horseman. According to my research, the objective of the series was to upload 12 episodes five days a week for five months. Honestly, that is a ton of episodes, even if it is short form content. I was able to find a website from an animator who worked on the show, Mark Paterson. Hey there, uh, Mark Paterson. It was actually very insightful and much more interesting than any of the social media posts or interviews about the show itself. Mark said that the main challenge was time management, since quantity was the goal for the series. How, quote, our four-person comp team had to deliver, in total, about 20 minutes of final renders to the edit team by the end of every day, in addition to tackling notes on previous day's scenes. There was no time to sweat the details or spend hours agonizing over a single effect. The mantra was to keep things simple but effective. We were each assigned three zodiac signs to work on for the entire series. I was responsible for the Aquarius, Pisces, and Sagittarius episodes. Typical daily tasks included reading scripts, watching animatics, rendering out the characters from Adobe Character Animator, positioning the characters into sequences, and adding any VFX if needed." End quote. As always, I rarely take issue with the artists or animators who work on a show. For many of them, it's a job. And there's no shame in that. My criticism typically lies with the showrunners and the writers. As I said earlier in the video, there were allegedly 1,200 episodes of Daily Horoscope, but virtually all of them are missing. It's rumored that they are on Roku, since Roku bought the catalog from Quibi. Well, that's just a dead end for me. When I click the link, nothing there. Just nothing at all. All we really have are YouTube trailers for the show and bad memories for the folks who watched it. But guess what? I found three episodes. During my research, I stumbled across a Vimeo account for an animator who worked on the show. Now, I'm going to keep them anonymous, just in case. Want to be good to them. But I'll post the three episodes and a link down in the description, all right? For those who want to suffer with me. Now, the first episode I watched was about a crab cancer, how she was crying to a cat and how the crab was dumped by a horse and then her horoscope told her to suck it up despite her vulnerabilities. That's it, that's, that's the episode. The horse I was dating ended it with me. Once you reveal your vulnerabilities, you want the bond to last forever. I'm sorry to say, that's just not how it works. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what, I shared all my vulnerabilities with that horse. Like how I told my college dorm mates <laughs> that I was in a plane crash just for attention. Oh my god, you did that? The next episode was about the crab saving the lion from quicksand. <laughs> okay, how the crab gets stuck in the quicksand while trying to rescue the lion, and how the horoscope for her says something about Mars moving backwards. <laughs> Oh, 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 yeah, it's, that's the show, huh? When Mars, the planet of action, moves backwards, you feel like you're stuck in quicksand. But Mars goes back to normal today. Thank goodness. Well, it's a little late for the quicksand warning horoscope, but, uh... The last episode is a, ooh, it's a Halloween special. The crab is back, and her horoscope says to tolerate discomfort. Uh, yeah, how she, um... 
got a hot wax on her. On my... On your what now? On my sweet, sweet, sexy bits. Oh, oh, oh she's talking about her crab vagina. <laughs> they could have made a crab's joke. Yeah, there's not much to go off of when it comes to judging this series. But with what I can watch, I don't like what I see. The character designs are generic. The personalities of the characters are unappealing. The dialogue is awkward and unfunny, and the animation is stiff and flat. I know the goal for this show was quantity over quality, but God is this series just unbelievably lame. Just goes to show that channeling the visual style of another successful series is not enough, and that you actually need to know how to write. Earlier in the vid, I mentioned that 1,200 episodes of the show were allegedly created. Which for me, I believe. I think that is the case. Why? Because the file names for these episodes all have numbers that I think represent the episode, like, numerically. That is episode 1077, 1085, 1095. Also, the guy who worked on the show, Mark Peterson, he said that 1,200 episodes of the show were made and that they aired on Quibi. So I'm gonna trust him on that since I have nothing else to go off of. But could you imagine that? Watching 1,200 episodes of this series. My horoscope today, get in your car, close your eyes, and hope for the best. In conclusion, your daily horoscope is the result of bloated corporate spending, uninspired corporate initiative, and Hollywood nepotism at its finest. Billions of dollars said, jump, and the contributors to Quibi said, how high? It's funny because I think something like daily horoscope could work on TikTok or YouTube shorts, but not if it's behind a paywall. That will never work, just never will. It goes against everything people on the web are accustomed to. The majority of online viewers won't pay to watch YouTube videos or TikToks. Why? Because they showed up in the first place for free content. Yeah, they'll watch an ad or, or an in-video sponsorship like Helix, but paying a subscription to watch these videos? <laughs> no, it's not gonna happen. Daily Horoscope only existed because a bunch of money was thrown at it with the right names attached. There was no inspired writing. There was no burning passion. There was no real vision at all. It was a corporate checkbox that needed to be filled that channeled the visual style of BoJack in order to appeal to millennial astrology nerds. <laughs> That's a mouthful, right? Once again, I think this series could work on TikTok if it had competent writers who could create engaging characters. It's a character-driven show, so yeah, you might want to, I don't know, make them fun? Just a thought. Now, will the rest of the series ever show up online or maybe on Roku? Mm, <laughs> uh, maybe, I don't know, uh, but I'm not holding my breath. It could be locked in some corporate vault for the rest of eternity, but hey, <laughs> that's okay with me. Pour one out for the animators who had to work on this show. Y'all tried your best, you deserve better, and I hope that you moved on to bigger and better things. But for the folks who want to like watch a show that's in the same vein as Bojack Horseman, please don't watch this. I guess you can't really even if you wanted to. Go check out Took and Birdie. It is superior to this garbage in every single way imaginable. Uh, for example, you can actually watch it. All right, that's all I gotta say. See you all next time. But real quick, a big shout out to this video sponsor, Helix Sleep. I'm back at it again with the bed sponsor. I sleep on it, not like metaphorically, but I mean like I literally sleep on this product. I've had this mattress for nearly three years and I love it. Getting some of the best sleep of my entire life. I, I recently got a new comforter and I throw it on my bed and I'm all cuddled up and all cozy and cute like. I'm a cute boy. Why did I say that? Guys, for those who don't know, Helix Sleep makes premium mattresses and bedding that are custom to fit your needs and conveniently shipped right to your front door. Helix has this sleep quiz that matches your unique body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. Do you want something soft? Do you want something hard? Do you want something that's kind of a fusion of both? That's what I have. Do you sleep on your side? Do you sleep on your stomach? Do you sleep standing up? Blah, blah, blah. It's a, it's a vampire reference. I'm funny. So the quiz will recommend a mattress based on your preferences. And for me, it was the Midnight Lux and Queen size. After that, the mattress was sent right to my front door for free. 
though it has to be like in the US for that. I pulled up to my room and there wasn't enough space. So when I opened the box, the mattress just poofed me against the wall, kind of bit my lip. I was like, she's got some push to her. Why did I say that? Um, just a word of advice. If you're gonna open this thing, make sure the room is open. No, don't do what I did. But yeah, the, the mattress is wonderful. I really do love it. It's very convenient and I highly recommend it. And for those who are hesitant about buying a Helix you've not been able to try, Hey, no worries. There's a 100 night sleep trial. So you have over three months to try out your selection and make sure that you love it. If you don't, Helix will pick up the mattress and you will get a full refund. Helix also has a 10 year warranty and they also offer financing options and flexible payment plans. So a great night of sleep is never far away. So I absolutely recommend Helix Sleep. It's one of my favorite sponsors. I use this product literally every day. I sleep on it. It's wonderful. I've been getting the best night of sleep in my life with this mattress. And I think you will love your Helix too. If you're looking for a new bed, check out Helix. Click the link down below or go to helixsleep.com slash saberspark to get $200 off your Helix mattress plus two pillows for free. Go hit them up today.